All right, everyone, we're being live stream on Facebook Frequency Fanatics. If you need to share that with anybody or if you'd like to go back and uh, look at something over again, I'm not sure my exact number now, but I have around 50 uh, recordings. So I hope they're not too boring, but just a different topic each time. And then uh, also today we're going to be talking about digestive support. So I think we're all set and um just thank you for coming today and getting on. I really appreciate that. So I've got one more click to share my screen so that we can uh, really get to biz down to business. Um, I think today I wanted to mention that I'm a teacher, a former teacher. And so um, I'll never forget one of my students uh, was teasing me one time, but very true. I taught sixth, seventh and eighth grade gifted education. And it could only come out of the mouth of, you know, a smart little kid, basically. But one day I was writing on the chalkboard and he goes, Mrs. Bamber, he said, you're not only blonde, but you're deaf, you know, <laughs> and he just uh, had the biggest fun with that. And then he just went on to say, but we appreciate your information. So I, it was just such a, a contrast there about teasing me mercilessly, but also a compliment. So I want you to know that I really enjoy sharing with you. I learn something every time I do this, and I'm just so glad that uh, I'm getting feedback about the Wave Watch and some different ways that people are learning to use it or, or not or whatever, and trying to provide you with something each week that you could look at or that you could share with other people. And what I'm seeing the most is that, like today, we're going to talk about digestive health, but what I'm seeing the most is that people need to learn more. We are not taking our health into our own hands. We are simply waiting for some kind of intervention and an easy pill and you know we want everything fixed overnight and you know that type of an idea and we want it seamlessly done but sometimes we need to learn more about things that affect our health so that's what all this education is about so here we go One more attempt here. Get this in. Okay. So um, don't forget that uh, we have the Wave Watch Frequency Fanatics, and this information is not a replacement for medical diagnosis. It's for educational purposes only. So we are not saying that you have this. We're assuming that you have looked at your own um, health or maybe you've already gone for a diagnosis and you you know have some ideas that you're gathering up that you may want to expand on but this is not diagnosing anything so that's the whole idea of self care and the wave watch Well, I think I have a screen up, but it's not moving very good. So I'm covering some questions that people ask almost every week. Somebody will call me with a couple of these questions. So you do try to wear the Wave Watch on your left hand because you absorb energy on your left hand and you share it through your right hand. That's an old, old idea that's been around literally for thousands of years. People have known that, although I thought it was fairly new to me. Um each of the frequency sets is like a different song. So I think we're all might be Elvis fans or have been in the past. And now we have some Elvis impersonators or somebody that sounds like Elvis, but they're not quite the same. And that's what different songs are. So like today, we're going to see, you know, um, it'll, you know, IBS one and IBS two. Basically, they're different songs with a little bit different frequency to them. Something in there is just a little bit different that might talk to your body, just like 
different Elvis uh, impersonators. You might like one of them better. I don't know. It's hard to beat Elvis, but you can still listen to that other Elvis impersonator and like what they're doing also. Another thing, people are not understanding the playlist. I do have some different versions of the watch. And um, on one version, there is a list of 800 and it's up to 62 now, but 862 different frequencies. And some people ignore the, you know, swipe screens that I've made, the playlist that I've made already. And they're trying to go through the 850 ideas and find something, say, for Lyme disease. And so like one lady in particular was so proud that she'd made a playlist and she had Lyme disease in it. She said, yeah, I found Lyme disease. And I said, well, did you find all 24 ideas that I have on the Wave Watch about Lyme disease? And she's going, no, really? What are those? Because if you're not doing a deep, deep dive, you may not know that there are 25 different ideas that I could find for the Wave Watch about Lyme disease, all the co-infections, the fact that we needed to detox and that kind of thing. So all she had to learn to do was to tap the Lyme icon, and then she had all of those. So don't make your playlist too, you know, um, short. Take advantage of the work that's already been done for you, but use that playlist to individualize. And then do not forget to set the double arrows icon in the very bottom left of the screen to play through that whole list. So if somebody calls me and that's their problem, oh, it shuts off all the time. It just runs a little bit and then it shuts off. That's what they're doing or that's what you're doing or that's the information that you could share with someone else. That the double arrows icon lower left corner needs to be set and you don't have to do anything else. It'll play through all of those ideas in that list. Hope this isn't too boring. <laughs> but... And then the length of the frequency tells us a little bit more. So eight minutes, if that's all it says on your screen, it's just the frequency by itself. If it's 15 minutes, usually I've added uh, inflammation, pain, and trauma because I think that's the most important frequency on the wave watch. And just about for anything, inflammation is, the pain is, and the trauma, obviously. And then if I have 30 minutes plus on a frequency, I've tied together several different combinations that are all similar, that all work for the same problem, that make it easier and better for you to use. So my favorite idea would be to share with breast health. Those are 30-minute combinations, and they have the exact frequency, say, breast calcifications, plus they have a frequency for inflammation, pain, and trauma, plus they have lymph node detox and uh, kidney and liver detox and hormones once in a while. So I put those together for you so that you don't have to think. You just touch breast calcifications and it goes to town for you, or you touch, you know, uh, breast benign cyst, and it goes to town for you. And don't forget that I've had women share about nine different times that breast lumps have gone away or almost gone away in a 30 minute time period in my office. So that combination works fairly well. Okay, so we're finally getting to the real topic here that we want to talk about today. Um, I think this number blew me away, but Probably not, you know, when you think about it, 70 million people suffer from digestive issues. So, gosh, could the Wave Watch be helpful? I don't know. We got to share it with people. But we do have several people who have really um, said that things have changed and actually fairly quickly. So these are the built-in frequencies on the Wave Watch under digestive so you would go to organs and digestive and all of those are available. Now, again, you may have been diagnosed with a particular problem, but the first time you're looking at this, I really would set it where it would go through all of these and uh, work for you. Uh, then pay attention. And if your body responds to one of those, try to make sure that you click your watch and that it comes back on. I've got 10, 10 now. How's that? So you would be able to swipe across the screen. I don't know if you can see this. You would be able to swipe across the screen and um, see the um, selection 
that is playing that your body reacted to. And then you would want to play that over a little bit. So it's pretty interesting to make sure that you are um, able to see what is going on with your body. Okay, so um, seems like I'm missing something here. Let me see what I wanna do here. Missing just a little bit of something, but I think I'll go ahead and go on. You can't necessarily see me, and that's what I was trying to get to. Um, not that you have to see me, but <laughs> give you some more information there once in a while. I think I'll just go ahead. I have trouble once in a while with everybody seeing me. So we'll just go ahead and leave it. So the next idea that I want to share with you is just a, a really good um, chart. It's from Storyboard. And we are uh, not realizing everything that has to do with some of our uh, intestinal or digestive problems. And so we forget about our mouth, that even problems up in our mouth, especially with our teeth and the saliva and everything can make a change in our digestive. digestive. Um, also the liver is part of the digestive system. And sometimes we're only thinking large intestine, small intestine. The gallbladder is part of our system. Our pancreas has a lot to do, obviously. It breaks down all of these uh, large molecules. It has digestive enzymes. Uh, of course, we do know the small intestines, the stomach, the large intestines. We, we usually know those. Uh, and the esophagus, again, we're pushing food down. And then sometimes people really have this, you know, feeling that food is coming back up, you know, because the peristalsis is not working well. So these are some beginning ideas about our um, basic digestive system. So obviously, I'm going to dig just a little bit deeper. Here's another picture that I thought was good of our digestive system. So you want to make sure that you play the liver, gallbladder, stomach sets, because this is part of the digestive system, but it is not in necessarily the digestive folder that I put together, because I would run out of room to duplicate the liver and the gallbladder and the stomach frequencies when they're already in another spot. So make sure that you are adding and playing those if you are concerned about your digestive system. Now, the first one that's on there is uh, colitis, and obviously it has a lot to do with inflammation, pain, and, and trauma. Um, so that is a huge one to play. It's the main part of your large intestine, your colon is, and of course, it's the last leg of that journey, you know, on your left side, and this can cause a lot of pain, diarrhea, sometimes some blood. So that's a, a great one to try if you're having some of those symptoms. But again, my uh, gut reaction to you, if you don't know what kind of digestive problem you have, is to play through all of the frequencies first and see if your body reacts to anything. Now, also, we have ulcerative colitis, and there's a little bit more severe symptoms here. Uh, you know, you're going to be possibly passing some uh, pus in your st uh, stool. You're going to have some more cramping and pain in your abdomen, a little bit more blood, maybe it's more severe diarrhea. Uh, you always feel like you need to have a bowel movement and you're maybe doing some, uh, having some fever, fatigue, feeling tired and unexplained weight loss. So those are the basic symptoms provided by, you know, uh, NIH.gov. And uh, these would be you looking at maybe some of your symptoms, but don't forget, you need to go to the doctor once in a while and see what they can uh, give you some ideas on. And then you're hopefully, I kind of know most of you, you're going to put those ideas together with other things that you're learning because you are taking control of your health. So if you have a duodenal ulcer, 
you may have uh, lots of acid that's causing a problem in, in the ulcer and calling, causing it to swell. Um, this is a little bit sad, but on the right column, you will see all of the medicines that they would or could prescribe to you. So you, when you have an ulcer, you have a hole, you know, you have a sore, you have a, a pussy pocket. There are several different ways to describe it. So ulcers obviously can be very, every, every one of these categories can be very, very problematic. And so again, you would look at those combinations, uh, make your own decision, but know that when you go to a doctor, these would be some of the possibilities that he might suggest for you. And then uh, sometimes you can uh, hopefully uh, ask for a sample. And a lot of you are getting really good at muscle testing and you might be able to muscle test something and see if that's the, the um, idea that your body does want for a particular health pro problem. So I think that's very, very important uh, to know that you now have a little bit more power if you've been watching our muscle testing very important for you to do. I'm going to see if I can stop this share just a minute and see what's wrong here. See if I can. See why I, I can't share. Okay. It's something wrong different every time, isn't it? <laughs> So there we go. Finally. Hmm. Don't think that's right. We'll try it again. I'm supposed to be on speaker view so that you can see me talk just a little bit. Uh, if you're like me, I already mentioned that I was deaf. And so I read lips a lot. So I don't know if that's important for anybody to see, but I cannot get myself to be up on the screen for some reason. So we'll go ahead and uh, I'll share with you again. So. Oh, thank you, Shafia. So may, I may have punched some buttons and I maybe didn't even need to. So who knows? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm trying to share my screen again. So uh, can you see my screen share still? Something isn't quite right. I cannot see your screen share now. I thought something went wrong. Thank you. Okay. All right, maybe we got it now. Is that coming up again? You got it. There we go. There we go. Okay, so um, all of that for maybe something I didn't need to do, but thank you for your help. <laughs> so I think I was trying to say that we need to learn sometimes what is causing problems. And H. pylori is one of those ideas that definitely causes um damage to the uh, mucus, uh, the stomach lining, and the duodenum. So there's lots of trouble there with ulcers and a bacteria. Now, you may remember that I told you another time that H. pylori has now been connected also with breast cancer. So you just want to play this folder and file every once in a while just for protection. So I would go through the pathogen folder and play that in entirety. And I think my best little example on this is I did have a lady who I screened with another tool and that system, the BioMeridian, the MSA that I've mentioned before, thought that she might have H. pylori in her system. 
And when we played H. pylori on the wave watch, she actually felt kind of like a wormhole go through her whole breast. And, uh, you know, she said it took like 30 seconds or something and it was playing H. pylori and then it just zipped off. So I don't know that I have had that reaction for somebody who was having intestinal problems, but I do know I've definitely had it for breast problems. So that is pretty important to see if you can clear some bacteria out of your system if you have any problems with your uh, digestive system. Now, they add new bacteria, new parasites, new viruses all the time. They're finding things that they didn't know before. So I would also play the whole bacteria folder and make sure that you are also detoxing when you do any of that, those ideas, so that you are trying to get things out of your system and you're helping that digestive system completely. Now, it looks like my right-hand column is a little bit messed up, but, you know, uh, uh, ibuprofen and aspirin can cause ulcers. So we also have bacteria, but they are also admitting, obviously, that too many of the, our anti-inflammatory drugs that are pushed on us are causing ulcers. So you want to be very, very careful with that. But again, that's why you would play that detox folder and especially try to get those ideas out of your system and then use them very, very carefully. And so you might be able to share that with somebody if they're having some digestive issues and saying, oh, are you taking a lot of aspirin? Or are you taking a lot of ibuprofen? They are known to cause ulcers. So, you know, we're just educating ourselves, but everybody else is not as educated as, as uh, uh, people are on this, I believe. So I really appreciate your um, sharing information at the end and the fact that you are so uh, willing to learn and add to what you already know. Um, I don't know how many of you um, have heard this and actually tried this. I know I had a friend about 20 years ago that told that she was had, had diverticulitis and she was told to quit eating anything that was a seed. And now the latest information... <laughs> is saying that nut corns, popcorn consumption, and the incidence of diverticular disease, that it isn't true, that they found absolutely no evidence to support this recommendation, that actually it was backwards. It was just the opposite that uh, they followed. There was a study, and it was done through the uh, Journal of the uh, American Medical Association, 47,000 people they were studied for 18 years. So that's quite a study. I'm very impressed with that. And they found that there was no link between avoiding nuts and seeds, and it was just the opposite. So if you're still on that old concept or you run into somebody that has been told that, that really is an outdated concept. And so sometimes specific nuts and seeds can be very helpful for that person's digestive system. So uh, these are the things that they are saying causes diverticulitis now. So I don't believe, you know, again, 20 years ago that my friend was told to stop eating gluten, but they're saying that's probably the biggest thing now. Other allergies, they might want some allergy tests. Those allergies could be causing the problem more, obviously, than nuts and seeds that people, you know, it takes us 20 years to unlearn something and learn something new and several times a repetition. So a lot of straining, a lot of uh, uh, constipation, you know, impaction, uh, even be already being diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome. Those are all ideas that they are now saying cause diverticulitis. And who knows, that may change and we may need to relearn something else. But in the meantime, we have the Wave Watch. We have a watch that has many ideas on it. So you can run through the ideas that we're talking about if you happen to have some of these digestive problems. So natural ideas for healing, you know, stay away from that ibuprofen, <laughs> stay away from the aspirin, you know, watch your diet. You might change to a liquid diet for a while. You might have high fiber foods. Make sure you've got probiotics. Aloe is a great tool for different digestive problems. Uh, there's digestive enzymes. There's garlic, green tea, ginger, 
I guess I printed garlic twice. Sorry about that. Uh, but those are all ideas, uh, herbals that are that, that can be good or herbs. Uh, acupuncture is really good for diverticulitis, lavender essential oil, and of course, the Wave Watch. So we now have a handful of things that we could do for diverticulitis and by the same uh, token, diverticulosis, you know. So um, very important to realize that we have choices now. And uh, I'm not sure that people realize they have choices. They may think that they need to... Uh, obviously see your doctor, which you should uh, see a, a health professional of some kind and that they might be limited to a specific prescription. But try to get people to, you know, think outside the box and learn there's so many other things that they can do. So intestinal diseases are kind of lumped together, but that is a frequency set. And then if you know that you have a particular uh, diagnosis, there are some deeper uh, frequencies in the chronic icon. But just intestinal disease, if you have been diagnosed with IBS, Crohn's, celiac, or even intestinal obstruction, you could uh, use the frequency for intestinal diseases that is in the digestive, or you could go to the chronic icon and try a few more specifics there. Now, uh, don't forget that we have frequencies in stomach pain also, and that would just be in self-care. So it's a little bit more um, generic, maybe is a better way to say that. And we have abdominal pain, inflammation, pain, and trauma again, nausea, stomach pain. And then that was a, a spot that I could see maybe to put motion sickness one and motion sickness two, you know. So maybe some intestinal problems, you know, stomach pain. Don't forget, there's many ideas to try. Very, very important. And I do want to give you a uh, testimony on intestinal obstruction. And I thought I had it written down and I couldn't get a hold of the lady this morning to uh, see if she texted it to me. I just didn't see it. But uh, I think verbally I, I can uh, give this testimony. But she had uh, problems with uh, bowel movements and she couldn't go to the bathroom without a lot of, of help and, uh, you know, enemas. And um, she finally went to the medical uh, community where they did some kind of testing and told her that she actually had a tumor that was the size of a baby's head. Um, and um, <laughs> that was causing the obstruction. And she was very, very careful, did not want to have anything done with it. And she uh, had the wave watch and she played the intestinal obstruction. And you know, I was going, well, how would you know if anything has changed because you have this, you know, pressing down on your bowels? And she says, well, I'm assuming I'd be able to have a bowel movement. And sure enough, within six hours, she did have a bowel movement. And so I thought that was pretty interesting that just one frequency labeled intestinal obstruction did change somebody's obstruction. Now, obviously, she needed to get more support and more help with that, and I'm not sure what she's done, but she did definitely say that that eased that off, and that gave her a little bit of breathing space so that she could make some decisions and do her own study and, and see what she needed to do, but I thought that was a pretty unique testimony that she did have a large obstruction. Um, a lot of times we have GERD. That's a, a big problem today. And don't forget, 70 million of us have, you know, intestinal problems and digestive problems. So I think most of us know that we're going to regurgitate, uh, you know, you you know, you eat and all of a sudden you have something coming back up, you have heartburn, you know, you've got a burning feeling in your chest. So uh, that's a, an easy one. I think that most of us know that we have uh, that type of an idea. And, you know, we've got acid reflux. Or, and so the frequency is just labeled GERD. And so, again, uh, the government NIH tells us what these particular uh, symptoms are. So I like to share that with you. Now, we're changing topics quite a bit here. Um, there are some problems with 
parasites and all kinds of digestive issues. And I thought this was a good little chart and it's from parasites.org. And uh, these are major symptoms that might tell you that you have gotten a parasite. And don't forget, we can get parasites from anywhere. I mean, I you don't know the trail of parasites or viruses or anything, but you know, if you have animals in your house, you're possibly going to pick up some parasites very, very easily. And sometimes people will say, well, I don't have any, any, you know, animals in my house. Well, do you visit somebody? Yeah. My, my daughter has dogs and yeah, I go over there and the dog hops on my lap. Well, you know, you never know about that. Uh, you might be raking the yard, you know, and, um, you're wiping, you know, something up, you're touching something, you're touching some leaves. And wow, you don't know what has been on those leaves. You just don't know where you can pick up parasites. You can walk in the sand on the beach. And that's been proven. That's an easy way to get parasites in our body through the our feet. Now, does that mean that we should be fearful? No, it means we should just run the parasites on the wave watch once in a while. So if you have diarrhea, and they usually say for a longer period of time, but if you've got diarrhea, you're going to start working on it and go through some of these ideas. Chronic exhaustion for more than a week, uh, sudden explained weight loss, a lot of itching, and abdominal pain and cramping. So um, those would just be uh, indications that you could have parasites. Um, but here's a big sentence that we all need to know. And I tried to be multiple. I tried to say it so that it might jog your memory. Intestinal parasites can cause multiple problems. Multiple kinds of parasites can cause multiples of symptoms. And that's what I see so often in people. They don't just have one parasite. They have many kinds of parasites. So they have way more symptoms than this. And if they go to the medical community, they may not know uh, exactly what parasite. Now, the system I have tests for over 100, and, uh, I think it's 150 parasites. So uh, we see quite a few parasites. Now, I, I have one more story. I'm a story person, but I did have someone who came and uh, they were getting paralyzed uh, this isn't quite intestinal, but they were having intermittent paralysis and uh, they had gone to uh, the medical community and had eight, I think it was CAT scans, eight different CAT scans. It could be eight MRIs. They had eight tests done and every single test was the same for the same problem. No new information was gained. So doctor number nine sent this person to me and the computer system I use, the MSA immediately said parasites. And then it started sifting and sorting through its parasites. And all of these parasites were from cats. And the, about the fifth parasite from a cat, looking very closely at the ideas for symptoms, this particular parasite from a cat caused intermittent or sporadic paralysis of massive headaches, allergies, exactly the problems this person was having. So the horror part of the story is sometimes we need to take better care of ourselves because this particular person looked at me and he said, yeah, he did have cats. There were four cats in his house. And he said, but is it bad if, you're, if the cats are on your dining room table when you eat? So I leave it at that. I'll let you think about that. But my eyes, I tried to be as careful as I could to explain that the cats had just come out of the kitty litter a lot of times. And then jumping on the table, yes, you were probably going to be picking up parasites off of your own dining room table. So one more idea on how we could pick up parasites. Maybe enough said about that. But don't forget, we have multiple parasites, they cause multiple problems. So you're gonna have multiple symptoms when you have parasites. So always think to play parasites. And that's why in the very first uh, page, excuse me, it's page number six on the booklet, I tell you to play inflammation, pain and trauma 
and then parasites, and then detox. I should have put in there and emotions. So those would be the major ideas to start with. All right, just kind of tying up a few more ideas. We have IBS. We have a couple of kinds of IBS. We have IBS one and two. And one of the major problems with IBS is undiagnosed candida. Usually they call it candida, but again, there are all kinds of variations and plays on frequencies. So it could be fungus and molds, candida, yeast. And so I would play through that whole particular folder. So sometimes candida, they say, can actually be mistaken for IBS. They might be, mis you know, somebody might be diagnosed with IBS because they're having gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, abdominal pain, fatigue, brain fog, and skin rashes. That sounds like a lot of other symptoms. So that's a very hard one to diagnose. And it definitely is connected with the candida, the yeast and mold. So play through all of those if you are worried about that or if you have those particular symptoms. And that's why I'm telling you that it's a good idea to run through the whole folder for digestive problems if you are having some type of a, a longer occurring digestive problem and you're not quite sure what it is. Cover all the bases. Okay, just to move on, intestinal obstructions. You know, uh, this lady that I've already given the uh, information on, she the only thing that she had was the constipation. She hadn't really had anything else. And so uh, one other portion of her story was that, you know, she could not even feel that she had a larger growth in her stomach. They did say it was was not um you know, cancerous, but I'm not sure I haven't caught up with her to know uh, what their final diagnosis was. But uh, we have to realize that sometimes we're not going to feel anything in our body. And the only connection she had was that when she was pregnant, uh, she no one, no one could tell that she was pregnant until she was about nine months along, you know. So evidently her body, you know, was able to hide uh, ideas. Handle Pamela. Her body was able to, you know, uh, reconfigure or hide the fact that she had a growth in her system. So again, the only thing that she felt was, or she knew about was the constipation. So if you're having problems, don't forget, you do need to maybe have some tests done once in a while, but be educated before you go so that you can make some decisions because sometimes you'll be pressed to make decisions right on the spot. So hopefully that's what this is all about, educating you so that you can make decisions. Now, don't forget dental connections everything ties back <laughs> well, Pamela. everything ties back to um trying to turn this off here sorry about that my apologies everything ties back to dental there is so much of it so the European health clinics are very, very concerned about toxic root materials, uh, root canals, uh, dental materials uh, connected with cancer. And we don't seem to be near as concerned in America. So it's huge to know. So I've captured this thermography picture and you'll see the lady's glasses so you can kind of orient yourself here. So this portion is the chin and all of this red around here is dental inflammation. And then you can see it moving down her right side. And so we do know that inflammation moves throughout the body. And then here's a chart. I've showed this in a couple different slides, but it doesn't mean that uh, we shouldn't see it again and have our memory refresh. So these uh, toxins go through meridian pathways basically. So for example, if you had problems on T2, which is a second molar right upper, which is similar to the diagram that I just showed you, this tooth drains through all of these areas on the screen. So it will drain to the, uh, the breast. It'll go through the pancreas, the esophagus, and the stomach. So do you see that connection right there? We could be having trouble from just a tooth. Uh, the, those vertebrae, the C1, uh, excuse me, 
C2, um, you know, TH11 and 12 could be uh, affected by it. Even our spinal can be affected by it. Your jaw, your hip, your knee, your ankle can be affected from toxins from this particular tooth. Uh, your sinuses, your tongue, and your parathyroid. So I have a chart on every single tooth, and I tried to give you the um, area there. If you need to snap a picture, if you want it right now, I tried to make it big so that you can see that. But every tooth has a chart and shows you where it drains to. So the next one, T3, through T3, first molar right upper, drains to the breast again and the pancreas, esophagus, stomach. So you can see right there that there is a dental connection with different stomach digestive issues. So huge to know. And then you need to get that worked on. So you may decide to go to a dentist. Um, you may decide to play. And I would start with, because you're not going to get into the dentist right away, you're going to start with playing some frequencies for dental uh, on the Wave Watch. There's a whole category of nine of them, and they are 30-minute segments. So they're going to have the particular category plus inflammation, pain, and trauma, which is so huge. So just to remind you, you should have heard this before, but teeth have roots with main, can main canals and thousands of side canals and contained in those side canals are miles of nerves. So they're basically saying two to three miles of roots in every tooth. So when you are having work done on a tooth or a root canal, they're going to pull out the main nerve, but the rest is really still decaying in your mouth and your body. So this can take years as infections move through your body. Huge concept that we are not taught. Two to three miles of roots in every, uh, every tooth. So that's why you could have a tooth out and five years later, you have digestive problems from the drainage from that tooth. It doesn't start overnight. Now these canals and these nerves are so small. The last I heard, they had about 75 of them named. And so it sounds like dentists are kind of uh, having a little bit of a competition to find some more main canals and nerves. and. Uh, you know, they uh, they get named after discovering a different nerve inside a tube. So last I heard again, 75 different nerves that were named and uh, identified inside teeth. Kind of to wrap this, wrap this up, the very last idea, we have to cover emotions. We always have to cover emotions. So, you know, pain, anger, anxiety, sadness impact our stomach and intestines and can slow down or speed up digestion. And I think that's probably an obvious one. Sometimes we know, oh, I was so upset, I could not eat. We've all heard that phrase. Oh, my stomach, you know, I was sick at my stomach. We say that. I'm sick at my stomach. It just made me sick at my stomach when XYZ happened. And it's an emotional connection. So our rhythm is upset. Uh, our sympathetic nervous system is upset. And, you know, the more digestive problems we have, the more gas, bloating, acid reflux, and again, nutritional uh, deficiencies. So there is a definitely a gut to brain connection. We have an emotion connection. So if you're having any digestive issues, you always play emotions. Always think about emotions for every particular thing. So um, I think I've kind of closed out uh, what I had to say today. And so I'm going to open this up. And I hope you uh, like the fact that I jump right in and I give you all my information and then we get to talk about it a little bit so we don't get too far off the path. But anyway, thank you for uh, joining today. And it's time, if you have anything to share, this is the time to do it. Let me know and say hello. And there's just a few of us on today. If you want to just uh, open your screen, if you have anything to say or add or uh, anything that I can help you with on the Wave Watch. Hey, Linda, it's Shafia. Yes. Um, so I, I was experimenting um, while you were talking and seeing if I could play a whole category. 
but I could not get my wave watch to do that. It, it will only do one thing at a time. Yeah, it only does. It only rolls through eight minutes. You know, if it's an eight minute one, it'll roll through eight minutes, but then it goes on to the next eight minute one and the next eight minute one, one, one you know, and it goes through them. Yeah. No, it, it wouldn't go to the next one. It just, because I, well, I have it on repeat and it just stays on the one. So I need to take it off repeat. Yes, you need to take it off repeat. It needs to be set on the double arrows going to the right. That little bottom screen is what hangs right. everybody I, up. Yep. Right. So now okay. you have it. So that was it. Playing, if it's just playing one, it'll automatically go to the next one then. If you have it set on the double arrows. Yes. I'll try that. Thank you. All right. Perfect. Yeah. And that does make it way easier. Yeah. Other questions, anybody? Or comments or additions? Oh, Boyland, I wish I would have had this wave watch last year when I had H. pylori. Ugh. Oh, my goodness. I went through <laughs> so much pain, and then I had to go on those three medicines, and then I ended up in the emergency room because I puffed up and was blotched up and so miserable. So, um, God, I just... Oh, I wish I would have had that last. <laughs> and I can't say anything's a hundred percent perfect, you know, but that's why we want to really try to uh, you know, make sure that we're um, you know, trying things once in a while to protect ourselves because, like my example, the lady with the uh, breast and the H. pylori, uh, when she felt something, she didn't know that she had H. pylori in her system, you know. I mean, I felt before when I had Epstein-Barr, I reacted to the Epstein-Barr frequency and I didn't know I had Epstein-Barr in my system, you know, so we don't know. So it, this is a preventive tool for our self-care. Yes. And as we get older, our digestive system, we don't have the acids and the balance that we used to either. Exactly. So we do need... Thank you so much for developing this. I'm so grateful for it because I'm running it all day. I don't sleep with it, but I run it all day long with all the different <laughs> whatever. Okay. And you know, some <laughs> people like to sleep with it. I'm one of those because it's a little flashlight when I get up in the middle of the night, you know, <laughs> I can turn it on and the lights on and I can make my way, you know, so all kinds That's of absolutely right. Linda, I was going to share that little extra when I get up at night, I just click my watch and I've got a light to go to the bathroom and the light to come back. It's wonderful. <laughs> fun, fun. All right. Any other comments? I have a quick question. Sure. Um, hi, it's Ann. Ann, um, I recognize the voice. You can't. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't hide. Um, but under viral immune support, I had a virus, you know, a week or two ago and is like vitamin D and C zinc or things, are they, are they tied into some of the virus settings? Yes. So that's okay. the one viral immune support. I believe I have a book that's a little bit older and I was hesitant. I didn't know whether, you know, to say, and so the next reprint of the book, I plainly put in there, the viral immune support is vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, and iodine. I was able to find frequencies for those in lupa for you. And so are all of those in that viral immune support yes. thing? So I can just, yes. oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Yep. Okay. Thank you. And then that's also built into the coronavirus combo. So when you play that, when you would also get the viral immune support, it's, it's oh, part I of that do? combo. Yeah. Oh, it's part of excellent. The combo. Because I was playing that. Oh, great. So I was, I was doing it all. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I've been seeing more, reading more how zinc is so beneficial and helpful with all of that. So I'm, I'm glad it's in there. Perfect. And um, some of you may not realize how important iodine is. I do, um, you know, work with, um, you know, breast health a lot. And I have a whole PowerPoint on iodine. I, I talk an hour about iodine. And uh, basically, they have uh, a couple of studies that prove that just gargling with, you know, some kind of a mouthwash that you made maybe with some silver, you know, uh, will kill the uh, C virus in uh, 30 seconds. So don't forget to use iodine in your mouth as a gargle, 
uh, you know, I have women put it on their breasts for different things, but it that's why the iodine is included in that one also. Very, Wonderful. very important to have. How much do you put it in or dilute it when you gargle with it? Uh, just uh, three to four drops in your mouth, you know. Oh, straight into your mouth. Yeah, and you can put it in a little bit of water, you know, or you okay. could put it in some silver. There's some specific recipes and I do have those. I'm just kind of, you know, quickly giving you the gist of the idea. Excellent. And there are Thank some people that are able to, uh, you know, put it up their nose. You know, there's all kinds of ideas for, um, you know, nasal uh, ideas you, also. Well, do you end up with yellow teeth or a yellow nose? No, <laughs> no, no. It actually, uh, iodine is necessary for our teeth. And they now are saying, oh, we should be having more mouthwashes and uh, toothpaste that has iodine in it. Wow. Okay. They're starting to add that. And by wow. the way, we used to have iodine in our swimming pools instead of chlorine. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Very interesting. Well, and if you ever are going to surgery, they always slather you up with that before. So they do. Yeah. So think iodine if there's something that you're missing. And that's why it was such an important one to add. Thank you. Uh huh. I just wanted to say that. Uh, I've always believed in a multi-pronged approach to go ahead and do research, do your supplements, do your herbs. We do iodine every single day, colloidal silver and several other things. Uh, we have crystals all over the house. So don't, I love my wave watch and, you know, I've got, uh, you know, 15, 20 hours a day and, you know, we have multiple wave watches and we swap them out. But that doesn't mean that you should ignore everything else in your life. You still need to eat right. You still need to take supplements and herbs. And you need to take the right ones in the right amount and get some exercise. I mean, life isn't just a single strand. It's it's all of it. And I'm just very, very grateful to have the Wave Watch to add to that box of tools. And I use it every day, but we do we haven't stopped doing everything else. Oh, I'm so glad. You know, and I hope that I'm not you know, I guess this is about the way watch. I hope I'm not overwhelming. I try to give a few tips and uh, Lynn, it, it sounds like our houses would look just alike because I've got stones all over also. <laughs> <laughs> and in every window for the light to come in through them and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yep. Wonderful. Thank you. But I hope everybody else does too. Every stone has a frequency. Don't forget. And they exactly know what some of those stones will work for. You know, so, you know, in, if you want to invest in something or have fun, get yourself a stone necklace of some kind so that you can wear those stones during the day also. So, and I have one on now, I guess uh, this is, um, I've forgotten the name of the company that I got it from Michael W. Smith, actually not the singer, but uh, somebody else. And this has stones inside it, you know, to wear. So some rare earth stones, supposedly. So uh, I like that. And I, uh, you know, that's one that I can wear. It matches with everything. But when I have a pink necklace, I just can't wear it all the time, you know, so. One of the things I read last week, we also do red light therapy. And something that I had not known about before was taking red laser light, even like with a little pointer and projecting it through the gems that appeal to you and shining them directly on your skin to amplify the gym energy with say 660 red light. And I hadn't heard that before, but I'm gonna be trying that. I think that's- Oh, interesting, that is. Great yeah. idea, isn't it? Great. It is. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's what the sunlight is doing when we, you know, sunlight comes through our windows and through a stone. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, you know, how about putting your hands up to the light and just letting, letting the light come through your hands because you know, what strong, strong, powerful energies we have in our hands. And we're missing all of that, you know? Yeah. So all that's a great, great thing, you know? So uh, don't forget to, to sit out in the sun and have some coffee and bundle up if you need to, you know, <laughs> according to the weather. I know some of us are freezing, some of us aren't, but that is so important to even what little sunlight we can get in the winter is huge. And moonlight too. Three, three or four days of the month, the moon sets in our bedroom window and it just, you could read a newspaper by the light. It's so strong. It wakes you up. And I just sit there and bathe in that light and just love it. I'm envious. Moonlight, moon that's wonderful. 
I am envious. We go outside. That's what we did last night. We were bundled up, everything, just <laughs> watching the movie. It wasn't near that strong, but we had our our, our coffee or some tea last right. night on watching the moon. But you get it in your window. Wow. Exactly. Amazing. Love it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Have a good week. I'll see you. See you next week for sure. All righty. All right. Thank you. Uh huh. Any other ideas before we kind of close it down? We're, we're kind of coming up to that hour mark, and I don't want to waste your time, but I want to make sure we've covered any digestive. Um, anybody have any testimonies or any ideas on that? Yes, Linda. Uh, yes. Your stomach ones and the self-care, anything over in there is absolutely wonderful. It, Anytime you ever feel bad in your stomach at all, just go turn one on and I guarantee you in a few minutes, you'll feel really good. It, it's, it stops almost anything. And just about the way your dizziness one does too, it's very, very good. It's Oh, thank you. Yeah, all that okay. even goes with stomach too. If you're feeling bad in your stomach, you can feel dizzy too. I feel dizzy, that's, that's right. So that's a really good one. It's very, very fast also. Okay. And then I was wondering, uh, where do you have a uh, one that's for itching someplace or what a, on my? I believe under skin, there is one for itching. What's it uh, And then hives is in allergies. What's it called under skin? I mean, I can't seem to find um, neuralgia. Is that one or not? Or? No, uh, it's under... I think it's skin and self-care, and that's probably not the one you want. So probably the hives, maybe, under allergies. Well, that's what I was wondering. That's just on the new watches, right? The, uh -huh. the newer ones, yeah. Okay. Another idea might be liver, because if your liver is suffering at all, it makes you itch. Oh. So if you're itching bad all over, this is an itchy person talking to you, whoever's involved. <laughs> so try running Our, that. Yeah, we should try liver for almost everything. You know, it has almost 500 jobs, you know. So but, if you got hormone okay. trouble, if you've got toxins, if you've got itchiness, yeah. perfect one. What about cholesterol too? Do you have one just specific for that or do you have to go like, liver and gallbladder and that type of thing or what? Yes, liver and gallbladder. I don't think I've found one just for cholesterol, but I am working now to get about a hundred more or a hundred more frequencies, try to come up with a thousand frequencies. So that might be one that I'm able to find. It takes me quite a bit of searching sometimes. And then it's like, oh, I just missed that was all, you know, but I'm uh, adding some more to that, and hopefully that will work where we can just have a new uh, TF card for those thousand frequencies. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Haven't got it done yet, but that's the that's always been the plan. Okay, ladies, thank you. Have a great week. Hopefully we'll see somebody or you can uh, send somebody to the Wave Watch Frequency Fanatics if you need any support. Bye-bye.